Hey everybody, welcome back to the Popper Metagame. Today it's time for something a little different. I've got some sweet Popper finance for you. First of all, you should consult a financial expert when you're going to do any serious investing. So don't go empty your 401k or drop your rent money on magic cards. Generally not a good idea. This is just stuff for fun and you should be using your fun money if you know what I mean. Having said all that, and now that the disclaimers are all out of the way, let's get into the good stuff. Today I've got three cards you should take a look at. And it doesn't really matter if you're uh, looking to play Popper or you just want to make some money. Either way, I feel reasonably confident about these recommendations. I don't make a whole ton of recommendations. I'm very uh, cautious and careful. I like to go with stuff I'm very confident about. I don't have a, a weekly show or article or anything that I have to do. I'm not under, under any pressure to constantly come up with random picks. So I can really hone in and occasionally present something I feel really good about. So I want to talk about Crypt Rats. A couple of weeks ago, Crypt Rats went from under a dollar, looking at uh, information from MTG Goldfish. We're looking at Crypt Rats. We're looking at the Visions copies. And we're looking at the paper copies going from under a dollar to currently over three dollars as of February 20, 2018. Cryptrats has only been printed in two sets, in Visions as a common and also in 7th edition as an uncommon. 7th edition was released in 2001 I believe and Visions is even older than that. It's a pre-2000 set. So Cryptrats hasn't been printed in over 15 years. I don't know the numbers for sure because nobody really does, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's less Cryptrats floating around than, say, rares out of new sets. Um, maybe even Mythics? I don't know. Maybe that's going too far. But comparing old print runs of Commons to new massive print runs, it's just kind of crazy, actually, how much more product is out there these days. Anyway. Cryptrats is not going to get reprinted in Modern Masters 25. I wanted to get this out and get this published before we get a lot of uh, spoiler information coming out for this reason. You're hearing some different talking heads talking about how you got to be careful with Popper because the cards are just going to get reprinted into oblivion. You can't sleep safely at night and this and that and whatever. Again, never mind the fact that tons of modern and legacy cards are looking at the exact same risks and in those situations you could lose a whole lot more money than you know picking up a three dollar popper card that maybe goes back to a buck if it gets reprinted. That aside, Cryptrats isn't getting reprinted in Masters 25 anyway. No, I don't have insider information. I just have done some simple A plus B equals C kind of analysis on this to figure it out. Cryptrats is abusive as heck in a draft environment. Wizards doesn't want to put a card like Crypt Rats in a draft environment where you can have a walking Wrath of God on a creature. It, it's just terrible. Unless you put it at rare or mythic, then, you know, it's fine. But reprinting this at common or uncommon just warps the heck out of a draft environment. It's, it's very infrequent with the current philosophy that Wizards operates right now and how they produce sets and how they make things. For them to put something at common or uncommon that can just automatically do four or five damage uh, across the board to every creature and have it on a creature body that, that can be brought back with a lot of random recursion like a grave digger uh, any number of things it's pretty frequent for there to actually be some pretty easy uh, creature recursion in most sets at common or uncommon so there's just a lot of abuse that can really mess up a draft format and make it kind of messed up. So it's just not going to happen. Also, Cryptrats isn't going to get shifted up to rare and released because there's just no reason to do so. There are only so many slots in master sets and they're all carefully balanced around getting just the right amount of value in the right places. And there's, there's just no real demand. Popper only sees play... I'm sorry, Cryptrats only sees play in Popper and fringe play in commander with rats decks and stuff like that but not really a lot there's just not a lot of reason to put this in a master set i don't I, not only do i not think crypt rats is going into masters 25 i don't think crypt rats is ever going to be reprinted in any master set 
Not only that, but this card sure as heck is not coming back into standard. So that basically means Crypt Rats will probably get reprinted at some point as the price continues to creep up in some kind of supplemental product. Like maybe a commander supplemental product. Maybe they just jam Crypt Rats in there once it gets up over six bucks just because it's it's some free empty money they can throw in there. Um, basically, Crypt Rats would be a throwaway card for Wizards because I don't think they care about Popper that much at this point. And they've got to put a certain amount of value in all of those supplemental products. So this would just be kind of an easy throwaway option for them. But it takes logistics and time for them to create these products. Crypt Rats just spiked up again over a dollar um, back on February the 4th. So, I mean, I, I just don't think you're going to see any Crypt, Rat, any Crypt Rats reprints this whole year. And for that reason, I expect the price of Crypt Rats to slowly, incrementally grow unless Popper gets uh, basically acknowledged and made into a regular format uh, by being sanctioned and something you can play at your local LGS and get Planeswalker points and all that jazz. If that happens, then Crypt Rats, along with the rest of Popper, could really explode and go nuts. And you could see this card double up in value again in just a few months if something like that happened. But don't hold your breath. I don't think Wizards is going to come around that quickly. They're probably just going to take a wait-and-see approach and see if Paper Popper really has legs. So um, I, I, don't, I don't foresee anything really happening there. Anyway, Crypt Rats, yeah, I, I feel pretty confident this card's going to get up 5 $6 pretty easily, and, I mean, I'm saying Crypt Rats won't be reprinted this year. There's a chance it might not get reprinted for a few more years, just because as long as Wizards doesn't care too much about Popper, and there's just not a good place to put it. There's very few places to reprint Crypt Rats. Most supplemental products, it doesn't make any sense because it just it's just not relevant to most Magic players. Uh, so, who knows? Who knows where this thing's going? But if you're playing Popper, get them now. Um, go pick up some, some heavy played copies on TCG Player for under 2 bucks, And get, get your playset now. Because they're just, they're just going up from here. Uh, this is not a situation where somebody just went in and flash bought up all the copies. I've been watching Crypt Rats and they've just been slowly draining, creeping a little at a time. Even though it may look like the price just all of a sudden shot up, uh, the, the inventory levels have just been going slowly, slowly down. Yeah, maybe somebody jumped in and bought you know, four or five play sets there at the end. But considering we're talking about a common, um, there's just been a lot of drain. And uh, yeah, this is, this is where we're at. Crypt Rats, not a bad pickup right now. Strongly recommend it. Let's move along. Pestilence. Beta edition. Now this is spicy because there's zero reprint risk. That's right. This card has already been reprinted into the ground. It doesn't matter if another reprint comes along because you're not you're not buying this so much for access to be able to play the card. There's plenty of copies out there. You're buying it because it's it's like foil plus, right? I mean. I know a lot of people don't think that popper players are going to pimp out their decks, but I think people will be surprised. It, it doesn't take that many players to decide they want to put some really nice, sweet, extra awesome looking cards in their popper deck, some old school stuff, some foil stuff, to cause cards like this to spike up. And as we're looking at this card, looking at, you know, this was this card's been, you know, recently in the seven to four or five dollar range, and it's kind of been trending up, and now it's up around nine fifty right now. And uh, there's no there's no copies on TCG Player right now. Uh, and of course, full disclosure, I have bought myself some some pestilences, pestilences, some copies of pestilence. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Uh, but there there was not really a whole lot out there on the market. Uh, there were a few play sets that I just picked up because I've actually got two separate I've got two separate popper decks that run Pestilence and I might even build another one I build a lot of popper decks, I really enjoy the format and I am one of those crazy people I like to really bling out my decks and stuff and I'm getting I'm getting my copies of Pestilence now uh, before they might even go crazy and go higher and here's the great part there's almost no risk in this because it's only at $10, yes it's a common but it's beta and, and there's a lot of people who love picking up beta cards. They don't even care what it is. As long as it's alpha beta, they are into it. So if Pestilence starts to pick up and actually have a place to be played, like Popper, um, 
I would not be shocked at all if this card gets up over fifty dollars before 2019. I know it's a bold prediction because I'm talking about a 500% price increase over one year, but I expect Popper to hold course and I don't see any reason for Pestilence to go down, even if it gets reprinted, does not matter. And all of the exact same lines of reasoning apply to Llanowar Elves from Beta. Only there's even more upside, because Llanowar Elves is a card that could actually see play in Standard at some point. From time to time, Wizards has been known to throw Llanowar Elves into a core set. And what do you know, we're going to have another core set this year. So if Llanowar Elves become legal in Standard, there are definitely players in Standard who want to bling out their Standard decks. And I don't think with Llanowar Elves it's a question of if, I think it's just a matter of when Llanowar Elves becomes legal in Standard again. Llanowar Elves is also uh, a perfect storm. All, all the other things, by the way, that I said about Pestilence hold true for the Llanowar Elves, uh, because I'm talking about the Beta Edition only, and of course same thing goes for Alpha Edition, but I just like Beta, um, just a personal you know, favorite of mine, and I like where the price points are at. But basically Llanowar Elves is just perfect on so many levels. Because it's it's hugely popular in Popper because Elves is a hugely played deck. It doesn't see play in a lot of other Popper decks, but Elves is popular enough. In general, Elves is a deck that occasionally sees play in Legacy and Modern. And there's tons of casuals that love Elves. El Llanowar Elves is one of those older, more iconic common cards that falls below Lightning Bolt. It's not that it's not that awesome, but it does have a really serious following. So when you add in the potential future demand from standard players when this card comes back to standard, maybe in an upcoming core set, and then you also add on the fact that this card is going to get some extra movement from popper players buying in, and now we have the perfect storm of interesting possibilities. So when we look at the price information on MTG Goldfish, again, I'm not affiliated with MTG Goldfish in any way. They just have really good information, so I use it. Uh, elves were actually back around ten dollars when we go all the way back uh, to August of last year, and then they took a, a, a hike up to around seventeen dollars, spiking up to around twenty-three dollars, and coming back down all the way back to fifteen dollars, spiking up to twenty-three dollars before coming back down around twelve dollars and then spiking up to thirty dollars. Now this is where something new has happened. We we hadn't seen Llanowar Elves get anywhere up this high ever before. The old beta copies had never quite gotten to this point. And then it came back down to as low as 21, but then boop, back up 25, and then another hike back up to 30. So maybe we'll get another decline back in the 25 range, but I just, I'm just not seeing any scenarios where this card is going back into the $12, $15 range. If it does, you should definitely pick them up then. But I actually think this is a pretty safe pickup um, somewhere in the $20 to $30 range. I think this card actually still has more upside. I don't, it's a little, it's hard to tell where it's going in terms of whether its price is going to level off or maybe dip back down again right now. But, you know, just keep an eye on this. And in case you're thinking to yourself, okay, yeah, there's a lot of nice, market factors with Lano RLs, but I mean a common thirty dollars? I mean does that even make any sense that you're thinking there's more upside? And just just by way of example, let's look at Lightning Bolt from Beta. Now I'm not saying Lano Elves is Lightning Bolt, right? It's not, right? But I think that Lano Elves can get where Lightning Bolt is by taking more time to get there. The reason I want to talk about Lightning Bolt is because it's a $105 beta common. Now granted, Lightning Bolt's probably the premier common from beta. In case you didn't know, Counterspell was actually an uncommon in beta. Um, but Lightning Bolt's pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, it's, it's over 100 bucks as a common. So don't scoff at the idea of a common from beta getting up you know, north of $70, $80. It's already happened with Lightning Bolt, and I think Llanowar Elves is on the right trajectory to get there. I don't know if it's going to take a year, two years, three years. I don't know what it's going to be, 
but you know pick them up and you know what my suggestion is don't try to get a near mint copy get something like moderate played and then play with them have fun with them and don't worry about buying a near mint copy that you can't have fun with because oh my gosh what if you put a nick or a scratch and you lose a lot of money so just pick up something that's already moderate played you know an extra small smidge or something is not going to really impact the value at that point also I think there's one last card that I <laughs> that I want to talk about just briefly I'm not as certain about this card but I do think it's worth just kind of giving a little brief mention since I'm doing a little popper finance random wrap up and that's fog the beta edition fog and basically I'm just hitting on some different commons out of beta that are gonna see popper play now lightning bolt even though we talked about lightning bolt I'm not recommending it I think lightning bolt from beta is a sound pick I think it's actually staying over hundred dollars from now off into infinity or until magic you know cards are not a thing anymore uh, basically a hundred dollars is a lot of money to drop on a card and it just it's just already a lot of that value is already gone that you could have picked up so I think there's other things that are more interesting so fog currently sitting at seven dollars and twenty cents I think fogs pretty interesting I mean it's it's not that exciting but I mean it's a card that sees some popper play not a ton the problem is it's it's not even a mainstay in a tier one popper deck it's not a mainstay in any format anywhere at a tier one deck level it's just kind of around sees fringe play could get reprinted in standard so it's it's a thing but it's it doesn't have anywhere near the momentum that pestilence or elves had and between pestilence and fog I'm, I'm a lot more excited about pestilence because I think pestilence is, is more of a thing in popper than fog is there there are some decks in popper that run fog and they will even do good on occasion but I just think pestilence is a is a better way to go if you're looking to find some beta commons to pick up and the great thing about the recommendations I'm giving here is there's really just about no downside on these cards I mean if you run out and pick some of these up th that's it there's no more supply that can come in these cards have already been reprinted into oblivion whether we're talking about Lanoir Elves or Fog or Pestilence they're just there's already reprints tons of them doesn't even matter if it gets reprinted and really it's, it's all just upside I mean especially when you look at these price charts Fog is starting to jump up a little bit but I still think it's really cheap all things considered I mean um, yeah so that's all I got for today everybody I hope you enjoy and uh, maybe somebody who listens to this will actually uh, get to have some fun picking up some some beta cards and uh, and having some fun with them like I said last thing don't don't feel bad about picking up heavy played or moderately played copies and just having fun with them you know S turning those turning those uh, uh, beta cards around and slamming them on the table it can be a lot of fun you know getting to enjoy that old school magic without having to stress out about if, if you get a little nick or a scratch so that's all I got for today and I hope you enjoyed this little update have a great day peace